Hi, and welcome to our Alumni Spotlight podcast. I'm Nicole, and I work to tell our student stories here at Ashworth. And today we are meeting with Dwight Levon. He graduated from our Healthcare Administration Associate degree. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm honored and thankful and grateful that you guys uh, allowed me to come here and talk about my story. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We loved it when uh, we got your submission. We thought you're just so interesting and had such a nice story, and we wanted to share it with everybody. Um, so what brought you to Ashworth? Well, what brought me to Ashworth College? I originally went to a um, technical school for billing and coding some years back, back in 2008. And of course, I gained the experience and things like that, but I hit that glass ceiling, especially around the time when everybody wanted a degree and everybody was like, degree, 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 degree. And it was just kind of like, oh, wow, you know, and I needed something that was going to be able to work with my schedule. I couldn't commit to going to an actual like brick and mortar college. I'm an adult. I have bills, you know, no one's taking care of me. You know, I take care of myself. So, you know, I don't really have that option to just say okay hey mom hey, yeah you know not that I couldn't do it but as a grown adult a grown male I was like I'm not gonna go back <laughs> you know yeah. it's just kind of like I have to kind of figure out a way but I also wanted something that was cost effective too you know I didn't want to have to spend a pretty penny on <laughs> you know oh, yeah. getting that degree yes you know when I already had the experience it was just like I don't really you know <laughs> so I I, I did go through a period of where I was just kind of like, maybe I didn't need it or maybe I wasn't going to. And I wrestled with that for a couple of years, actually. So then finally I made the call. <laughs> yeah. So um, what was the appeal about Ashworth? I mean, obviously you wanted something that was affordable and was, I'm, you know, you were looking for a quality education. Did you like the fact that it was self-paced or were you initially looking for something that, you know, was just online, but maybe had a set schedule? I was actually looking for something that was self-paced. And like you said, that was quality, that was accredited and something that would, that I can actually learn something new from as well as, you know, say, hey, I went here and be proud to say I went here, you know, right. and not say, yeah, I got a degree, but uh, you know, you know, I wanted to, you know, say, yeah, I went there and it, it stood the test of time. It's been there, it's been around, you know, so that's what led me to ask for a College. And then the fact that you all have wonderful instructors there. So if I needed help, I could call, especially when I was in my public speaking class. It was just kind of like, oh, wow, you know, they were there. So I, I like that appeal about it, you know, but I still like the Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, but I still like the autonomy of it as well. You know, it's kind of like, oh, I want you there if I need your help, but you know, I don't need your help. Let me do it. <laughs> That's such a great way to put it. Um, you know, I guess, I, you know, obviously we know it's self-paced and everything. And I was going to ask, you know, did you avail yourself to any of the resources? Um, you know, did you find yourself needing to ask for help? But I really like how you put that in that, you know, it's there if you want it, but if you don't need it, you can just kind of continue on as, you know, at, at a pace that works for you rather than, you know, oh, hang on, I have to stop and do this, or I have to check in. Um, you know, how do, was it easily accessible to get that help that you needed? Yes, it actually was. I remember my first, uh, hard class which was English um because I kind of not sorry, kind of but I sucked at English I sucked at math especially in grade school and things like that I was a resource student so that with you on math I am it's not my strong point <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I struggled with that. And I'm not going to lie, the, I had anxiety around writing my uh, first essay in my English class. So I, I went through the whole shebang of maybe I'm just not going to do this or can I find a school where I don't have to write essays? I mean, I literally went through that and it was finally, I said, you know what? I've come this far. I'm not going to give up let me reach out to the instructor and she was so nice and she just kind of helped me she told me to read this how to do the uh brainstorming how to paragraph everything and do your rough draft and that really helped me out a lot and so I'm so thankful because I don't I know that I probably wouldn't have done it if I hadn't reached out to the instructors 
Wow, that's so great to hear. Um, so, you know, I was going to ask you, what did you struggle with the most and how, you know, how did you get better at it? So obviously, you know, asking for help definitely did that with the English and, you know, paper writing can be so intimidating, especially because you might have all the thoughts and everything that you need there in your head, but it's so hard to sometimes translate it, especially when it has to be formal and structured in a certain way. And that can be extremely intimidating. Um, did you feel like you kind of had that imposter syndrome where it was just like, oh, hang on, like this is not for me? <laughs> I did have that. I'm not going to lie. I did have that moment where I was like, you know what? This is just not for me. And I remember sitting there at the table and I was at my computer and I remember just crying because I was just like, this, this is just not for me. And I just thought, I, I felt so defeated. And I was just like, this, this just isn't it. And I remember it was a paragraph in the uh, packet that I was reading that was part of the school. And it was saying, just take your time, just write it out, you know, just write it out, regardless of whether or not it's spelled correctly. Don't even worry about that. You come and do that at the end when you do your proofreading, you know? So, you know, so I just remember just sitting there and I just remember just typing. And I remember just typing and just writing and just typing and just all the thoughts, you know, and I remember just writing and typing it out, not caring. And then going through the whole process. And I remember just kind of being proud of myself at the end and just kind of like, you know, I had the instructor there and I had the, the, the tools and everything. And I remember actually just doing it. And when I submitted, I was so proud. I was like, okay, you know what, whether or not I, I, I just want to pass in grade, I'm just like 75, you know, just give me a C, you know, I don't care if it's a C minus, just, you know, <laughs> passing is passing at that point, you know. <laughs> Oh, man. So, so but, when, when you did, you know, complete it, did you then feel like, okay, I did this, I got through this, I survived it. Did that make <laughs> it easier than when you like kind of hit another hurdle or another like rough patch? Because, you know, school is not, it's, I think sometimes people think, oh, well, you know, you're an adult, so you have all this ex like life experience. So, you know, it's, you should breeze through it, but it's, it's not school's hard like learning can be really <laughs> difficult so you know you do hit those rough patches but you know did conquering that first obstacle did that help you then when you reached other ones to get past those yes it actually i'm not going to lie when i conquered that one it was just like okay if i can get through this i can get through anything they throw at me <laughs> you know and it's, I'm not going to lie. I think I got like a 90 something on that first yeah. one. Yes. Just about a C. <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, wow. And then I started to look at the credentials. I was like, well, who, who graded this? And I was like, she's a PhD. I was like, what? And she went to this grand school. I was like, what? And I was just like, woo. <laughs> Talk about bragging points. I was just like, wow. But it was so worth it. And it was my hard work paid off. And I'm telling you, I list, I followed those instructions to the T. I was like, okay. She said, do this, do that, do this, do that. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> it's definitely, yeah, they're there for a reason, but that's so great. Cause that does give you that confidence boost when you do something well. And you know, like, especially if it's something hard, you know, I always say I have a 10 year old. And so when she struggles with something, it's like, oh, it's the end of the world. She can't do it. It's so hard. This is awful. And it's like, right. But if you try really hard and you get through it, it doesn't have to be perfect. But when, when you can get past that little like point, like I always say, you know, and if you read some of the blogs and stuff on the Ashworth page, you know, we always recommend set goals for yourself because once you get past those smaller goals, it helps you to then move on to the next one. You have that sense of accomplishment. It's like, okay, the next thing doesn't seem as tough. Did you find that you did that or did you do any other tips or tricks, you know, to kind of help you progress throughout the course? I did do that as well. I set goals for myself and I did tell myself, okay, do I, I'm going to dedicate this amount of time for my school. And I actually, I'm not going to lie. I gave up like my leisure time, like to go hang out with friends and things like that, because I told myself what 
am I going to get out of hanging with my friends now that I won't get out of hanging with my friends next year? But what am I going to get if I don't focus on my degree now and I try to focus on it next year? I'm going to be in a spang, you know? <laughs> That's so smart. I'm going to steal that. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go it for is, it. It's really, really true. I mean, you know, especially if, you know, something like trying to complete your grade, that is, again, it's self-paced. You can take your time. We don't want to rush anybody because everybody does learn at a different pace. No, Not everybody learns in the same way, but, you know, that school should be one of your main focuses and you know your friends will understand they're gonna they're gonna be proud of you too for you know getting through it how did your friends you know react to you when you finished your program my friends actually I remember calling out to like a cousin of mine a friend of mine I was like oh I really need help with this and and my cousin told me you know you you can do that and I was like what do you mean she's like you can do it I was like no I, I struggle with this I struggle with that she was like no you can do it you know and and she's like I'm not gonna help you you can do it and I was just like but you know she's like I'm in school too you know I can't focus on trying to help you you know proofreading your stuff she was just like ask the teachers you know ask the instructors and I was just like okay and I remember my friends just been so proud of me and they were just like I knew you could do it and you know it, it was it was an amazing feeling and to know that I actually accomplished something that I had been wanting to accomplish since I was like 19, 21 years old. I first started off getting into the medical field. I've been wanting to accomplish this goal for over 10 years. So over 12, 12 years. So it was, you know, definitely a dream come true, you know. <laughs> That's so great. And it does give you such a good feeling, but it's so important to have those people around you who are, who tell you, you know, you can do it. Not everybody necessarily has that, you know, at home, unfortunately, but, you know, we have things like the student community where a lot of times people can find support. Did you ever, you know, make use of the student community? Not everybody does. I mean, it sounds like you had a great support system around you anyway, but do, sometimes people worry about the socialization aspect of being in an online school. You know, some people are very outgoing. You seem like you are. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you like to be around people. You're more extroverted. Did, did you use the community? Did you make any connections with other students? I'm not going to lie. Um, as great as my support system is, they are human. Mm -hmm. And I did have those times where they were not necessarily as supportive as I would want them to be. And, you know, it's nothing bad against them. Sometimes you have people that they just don't see the value in the education. And, you know, it's just not them. They're, they're comfortable and that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay, you know, but I did go to the student uh, community. I did set up a profile there. I put my picture there and I remember going through that. And I remember reading, it was a lady in there. She went through the same program, health uh, administration. And she was just like a regular worker at the time. She was in the billing field as well. And I remember her saying, you know, I got my associate's degree. And someone asked her, are you going to go back and get your bachelor's? And she said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. But I actually got promoted to being a supervisor. And they were like, what? And they was like, yeah. And she got a big pay raise. And that was just like, wow. And I remember just kind of talking to her and talking to other people who were right where I was at that time and encouraging one another. It, 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 it really did help out a lot because sometimes your family and friends are great, but sometimes they cannot always be there and that's okay. You know, it's not their journey that you're going on, you know, but that's why I was thankful that I found a student community and I was able to go there and find other people that were in the same situation, just like me, needing motivation. <laughs> and it's nice to have people to relate to, because, you know, even if you do have the most supportive, you know, connection to family and friends around you, if they're not going through the same thing at the same time, you know, they can be very understanding and very empathetic, but they don't, again, nothing against them, but they don't necessarily yeah. quite get it because it's just, it's not, like you said, their journey, but somebody else who's on a similar journey is going to understand like the little itty bitty things that maybe kind of get to you that, you know, they can say, Hey, this is how I got through that. Or like, just, you know, that, that voice of support, like, Oh yeah, I know. Tell me about it. Yeah. At 1am in the morning when you're trying mm -hmm. to 
complete an exam or come up with an idea or a thesis for a paper and you're just like really <laughs> and you're trying to figure out the format and you're like did anybody take this class <laughs> you know what they mean by this format exactly yeah so do you feel then in that sense like you know again some people feel like they miss out by not going to if they don't go to a brick and mortar school so did you feel like then you still had that same kind of like not necessarily classroom support that you would get if you were in person with other students, but that same kind of feeling where it's like, okay, almost like a study group, I guess, in a way, maybe not necessarily an actual study group, but having that kind of system in place. Yes, I did, especially with the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, I think all of us have to kind of find a new way to yeah. gain that, I guess, that people experience. And Ashworth College already had it there, but when you went through the pandemic it's like you appreciate it more you understood why it was there and i fully utilized i i didn't feel like i and I, honestly i was i was thankful because i was like Woo, i could literally just log off when i you know didn't feel like talking anymore i didn't have to get in my car and drive anywhere because i had to get ready for work you know it was just like okay it, it was it was a lot easier and a lot better for me because it was just like Woo, when i didn't feel like being bothered i could say okay i'm gonna log off you guys you know but when you're in class, you can't really just, you know, check like that without someone. Are you okay? You know, oh, <laughs> you're <okay>. just like. <laughs> that makes so much sense because I think a lot of people, at least I know for me, you know, during the pandemic, you got so isolated that, mm -hmm. you know, it, it sometimes does feel like a task, like having to go out, like you said, like get dressed, go get in your car, go someplace and then have to talk to it. Like it's a little emotionally draining sometimes. Like it's great in some ways it's really energizing, but in other ways it's like, oh, okay, I feel tired now. So I didn't think about that, having that, that connection there, like doing it online, like, okay, I'm still making these connections, but it maybe doesn't take quite as much of a toll on you. Like it's a better way to ease back into society. <laughs> <laughs> exactly because you know you, you have to give so much at work and then you have to be on at school it's a lot you know it's a lot especially if you work around people you know it's a lot with people's different personalities and then you have to go to class it's, it's a lot so <laughs> it definitely is um so what's something you wish you knew while you were still a student? Is there anything you feel like, oh, you know, I wish I knew how to do that or I wish I did this or I wish I had access to that or was it kind of overall like, no, I feel like I had all the tools in place. Actually, it's so crazy because I would say in the middle of a course, oh, I wish I had this, but by the time I got to the next course, I had it, <laughs> you know, if that makes sense. It was just kind of like, the way that they have it structured, you have literally everything that you need for that course. But if you are a planner like me, you wanna try to see what's next and you kinda of wanna plan for ahead, it kinda of struggles right there. But if you just kinda of trust the process and you understand that you're gonna have everything that you need right there for that course. And I had to, I had to understand that you can't compare biology to math, you know, in a sense, because in a sense, it's almost similar, but it's not, you know, one's number and one's something completely different, <laughs> you know, you may have formulas, you know, it just, it's just, it's just completely different, if that makes sense, that probably wasn't the best example, I probably should have said math and reading, but you know, <laughs> but you have all the tools that you need. So I, I couldn't say that there was anything that I was missing. Um, I probably if there was something I was missing, I don't know if I would actually have completed it because I'd probably be saying, well, I need this, you know. <laughs> you know, but that's just kidding. I mean, I'm sure I would have completed it, but, you know, I had all that I needed. No, it's good to know, though, that, like, because I think also that's another thing that sometimes people don't realize, you know, you are provided with, you know, most of what you need going into these courses. It's not just like, oh, okay, here, enroll and then figure it out. You know, we, tr we try and hand help you out as much as possible in terms of making sure, you know, you have access to the things you need. Um, you know, of course, online learning takes a certain amount of discipline, I think. Um, you know, obviously you had that since, as you said, you're a planner. So, you know, somebody going into it maybe needs to, 
prior to sit down and try and come up with an idea of, you know, how do I best learn? How do I best map out what I'm going to do next? But, you know, everything else we try and make sure you guys have. Yep. And they did. I did even provided me um, ICD 10 books, CPT books for the coding course. I was like, well, what about the books? I was like, well, I don't, I don't, what am I going to do for the books? And, you know, and it was just, oh, they're going to be shipped to you once you get into that class. And I was like, well, oh, well, well oh, you know, it was just kind of like, oh, OK, you know, <laughs> just like, calm down. <laughs> it's just like, oh, well, focus on this first, you know, and I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> and they did. The books came and, you know, when of course that they, they were on their way and they were shipped. And I mean, it, I had everything that I needed. So I didn't, it was included in, in, uh, in the tuition as well. So I was shocked. I was like, whoa, that's, I don't have to pay for the book separately. It was all I included. I to surprise you with anything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. At least nothing was shocking anyway. Um, so what are you up to now? What are you doing? Who are you working for? Can you tell us a little bit of, and, and what exactly are you doing with healthcare administration? Yes. Okay. So now what am I up to? I actually am a certified coding specialist. Uh, I work for a company called GHR. Um, I actually, the client I work for is a like a Fortune 500 client located in New York. Um, my degree, it has opened up so many doors for me, especially with the public speaking class. I learned how to create a, uh, is it a PDF file with the, when you put the notes in there and you kind of give a presentation. I didn't necessarily, I've seen other people do that, but I didn't know how to do that. So when I learned how to do that, it was just like, wow, now I can do a presentation. Now I can do this and now I can, you know, show that, hey, I'm able to be in that leadership role. Not only do they believe in me, I also believe in myself. And I have been given other opportunities and other roles and things like that because of my degree. And um, I'm not saying that you got to have a degree to make it, but to get to a certain level, it, it does play a major role. And the respect that people give you, it's a little bit different you know, once you reach a certain level um, in your career and not everybody wants that. And that's completely, you know, I, I was one of those people that's completely fine, but it did. It opened up a lot of doors to me for a lot of different opportunities for companies. I would have never even thought that I would have even called and reached out to me. So yeah. that's really <laughs> nice to hear, you know, yeah. I, I've said it before on a couple of different podcasts or Facebook lives or something, but, you know, we we work because we want to see every our students succeed but it's it's a little bit selfish I think sometimes at least for me like in doing it because hearing these stories and hearing you know how that helped you and how you know maybe you didn't have the confidence before but now you do and now you know you're doing things you're working for people that you never thought would have been a possibility like that makes us feel good too so yeah so we owe you a lot so thank you for that because it it really does it sounds super cliche but it, it really is true like it's nice you know to hear this because it just kind of reaffirms you know what we do every day and it's nice I think probably too for your instructors to hear that as well because they know that they're making a difference yes and it's true you guys definitely do deserve it it's not I know it sounds cliche but it's it's real like throughout the program my instructors were really even when I was just kind of like oh my gosh you know they were there and they, they helped me even when I called student service I mean you know the customers that they were just there helping me through the process and they understood and and it I didn't know that I had even reached a glass ceiling until I got my degree and I started getting calls from the ESO. I just was like, oh, wow. You know, this is that glass ceiling that they're talking about. You know, it, you can't see it because it's glass and it's yep. shine with Windex. You don't even, you know, you, you, you don't even. So I, I was just, I, I just never in a million years thought that I would be able to say I, I had honestly given up on getting my associate's degree or any type of degree uh, years ago so it was this was really you know it was amazing to know that um, 
that I could do it because I said I, I didn't have that confidence in myself. I, I just thought, oh, I did. I was bad in school, not bad like behavior wise, but when it came to studies, I was just like, oh, you know, I was in resource and, you know, but no. So <laughs> if I can do it, definitely. You know? <laughs> no, that that self confidence is really important. Um, it's, so how long did it take to, for you to find your your job uh, your job after you received your degree, and how did you find it? So it actually did not take me, uh, I mean, the moment I updated my uh, LinkedIn profile, I would say within within a week or so, I started getting people looking because, you know, like I said, I, I already, I had experience, but, you know, I didn't have that, that degree. And when I updated that, I started noticing people looking at my profile and I had people reaching out to me and these were companies that I did not, I had not, you know, I would look online and try to apply to, but they wouldn't, you know, or I would look and look at the job description and it would say a degree required and I'd just be like, oh, okay, you know, move on and just say that whole, uh, and these same companies were reaching out to me. So about a month or so, I mean, I had a lot and I still get them now and it's amazing. And I'm just grateful and um, I'm grateful, I'm honored and I'm thankful that I was able to do this for myself because I I did not believe that I could do this. And as for it made it possible for me to be able to do that, no one saw me there crying. No one saw me there with the self, you know, no one knew, but, you know, I was able to get through it and they made it possible because I didn't have the eyes on me. So I needed that. So thank you. <laughs> I'll ask for it. <laughs> Our pleasure. Um, so what plans do you have for the future? Anything or are you right now just kind of taking it all in and, and enjoying this little, you know, break in success? <laughs> I know, right? Well, I'm definitely enjoying the break in success, but what I do have for the future is um, I kind of want to be more of an independent type of contractor. I kind of want to take what I have and I wanted to be have my own business and things like that. So that may be something that I may do, but I'm also, I've taken my degree and I am studying for chemical dependency counselor and because of yes so because of my degree from asteroid that i am qualified to actually be a part of the program take of course i have to take the addiction part and things like that but my degree will open up the door for me to actually sit for my licensure and so when i want to go and become a master level counselor i can and because of my degree and things like that and i'm able to go to another school and and get that and I can come back to ask and get my bachelor's in psychology and then take that and get my master's. So this has really opened up the door for me in so many ways. And I hope that it does the same for others. And I just want people to know that you can definitely do it. You just have to, I know you're going to have people say this and say that, but just kind of tune all that out and listen to your instructors, listen to what Ashford say and listen to the student community and just search online and just kind of think outside of the box. And that's exactly what I did. And when I tell you it's working for me, and I never thought in a million years that I, Dwight LeVon, would be here doing this, talking about a degree. <laughs> well, that's so wonderful to hear. And that actually kind of summed up what my last question was, which was, you know, what would you tell people who are thinking about Ashworth? So, you know, just want to say thank you so much for joining us, for sharing your story with the Ashworth community and for all the amazing work that you did and are continuing to do and will do in the future. Oh, thank you so much. And again, I'm honored and I appreciate you guys for having me and allowing me to share my story and encouraging other people, you know, to do the same and know that you can be a resource student, and still get a degree in it. You know, you don't have to just stop, you know, so. <laughs> well, thank you so much. All righty. Bye.